When 3D modeling, you will encounter situations where you will have a single surface consisting of details of varying complexity. This means different density at different points on the mesh. When this happens, you will need to know how to properly transition areas of varying mesh density. Let's understand this with an example. Alright, so we're going to start off by grabbing a B cube here. And you can get this off of my Gumroad store. Now let's just tab into edit mode here. And you'll notice that we have an extra set of control loops here. So this is so that we have a nice bevel so that the faces that we have here will be flat so that when we cut any details into it, there won't be any kind of artifacts. So before I go ahead, I'm just going to select the faces at the top and the one at the bottom there, just expand my selection. And once I do that, I'm just going to inset. And this is to basically shift that three spoke pole inward so that we don't have any shading issues. So I'll just bring the subdivision level down to one and I'm just going to apply that. And once I do that, I'm going to add another subdivision surface modifier over it. The reason I'm doing this is so that I have some resolution to work with. So I'll just turn it off for the time being. And now let's just go ahead and add a detail here. So I'm just going to inset and then add a circular detail there. And we'll inset once again and extrude it once. Go ahead and inset again and then add some control loops to hold that shape. So now we have a little detail here. So when modeling, we're going to have multiple details on our mesh with varying density. So let's go ahead and add a detail to a different part of the mesh and see how it's going to influence the detail that we created at the top. So I'm going to switch off our subdivision surface modifier here. And I'll just select these faces here and inset once before I go ahead and extrude it. I'll go ahead and inset again, just to shift those three spoke poles in. And I'm going to add some control loops to this. So I want to try and retain the shape that I created there, because when we add that subdivision surface modifier over it, it's going to smooth everything out. So I want to just preserve those corners that I have there. By adding some control loops, we'll be able to hold on to that. But you can see that what ends up happening is it's messing with our circular cutout there. So we're going to have to redirect as well as reduce some of those loops in order to preserve the details that we created beforehand. So in order to do so, I'm just going to go back and I'll just cut an edge loop here and I'll just straighten that out so that we don't get any unintended pinching. And I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not being too precise. So now what I'm going to do is just get rid of those edges there. And I'm going to go ahead now and just delete those edges at the top. So before I go ahead and do that, I'll just weld the words together there. So go ahead and select that and get rid of them. So now what we're going to do is, all right, so what that does is it basically terminates that loop to that point that we had there. Now go ahead and get rid of that extra edge that we had there. And we can see now that our detail that we cut out before is back to what it was. So I'm just going to weld this again to the word next to it. So just searching for that auto merge function. So just go ahead and weld those together. So once I've gone ahead and done all that, we end up with a couple of triangles, but nothing we can't fix. Let's go ahead and just connect the corners.
and then get rid of those edges that we had there. So not only have we now redirected and reduced the loops, but we've also gone ahead and made sure that the edge flow is the way we want it. We want our edge flow to flow around the shape that we've created. That way it makes it easier to select everything. So it's always good to have your edge flow behave in a very predictable manner. So I'm just going and adding in a couple more edge loops there just to hold that shape nicely. And as you can see, we have a nice clean detail on that surface that's not interfering with the detail that we cut out on the top. So nice edge flow. We want it to flow nicely around the shape that we created. And when we expand a selection, it's behaving in a predictable manner. So this is what we want. So now let's go ahead and add a different detail to a different part of the mesh and see how that affects the mesh that we have. So I'm just going to nudge some of those words into place like that. Just make sure that I turn snapping off. And let's just go ahead and insert an extrude once again. We need to make sure we do that so that we shift that five spoke pole outward. And just insert once again, just to pull those three spoke poles in. And now we're gonna to want to preserve that shape that we created there. So I'll select the loop in the middle. We want that nice pointy shape. So I'll add an offset edge loop to it. But that's gonna go ahead and mess around with that cutout that we have there. So we're going to go ahead and add some more loops just to hold that corner. Again, eyeballing the placement of those control loops. And now you can see we have quite a bit of loops that are just running up and messing around with that circular cutout. So what I'm going to do here now is just grab those three butts that we have there and then merge them to the center. And we'll get rid of the line that's running in the middle and that's going to create a quad. We'll do the same thing to the bottom as well. Just get rid of that line. And now we'll connect the corners similarly to how we did last time. Make sure that I grab the right vertice and connect it. Get rid of those extra lines that we don't need. Go ahead and get rid of all those extra loops. Again, repeating the same thing, just grabbing and welding them. So once I've gone ahead and done that, just gonna get rid of all those extra loops. Just gonna go ahead now and edit the edge flow a bit. We want it to flow around the shape that we create. And we're just going to get rid of some of those extra edges. And make sure that we redirect some of those control loops so that they don't end up interfering with the other shapes that we have. So just getting rid of some of those extra edges. So now what I'm going to do is just cut another loop. 
The reason I'm doing this is so I can extend the three spoke pole out and away from the extruded details boundary loop in order to prevent any shading related issues that may crop up. And I'm going to nudge those bursts just to ensure that they are not concave, otherwise, it would be problematic. So let's just throw a shiny matte cap over this and see how it looks. It looks pretty good. We don't see any kind of artifacts. All the details are exactly how we want it to be. So let's take one look at the topology again. And so we have a clean quad based topology. Okay, so now that I've demonstrated how to balance details of varying complexity on a continuous surface, here are some things you need to keep in mind when employing these tricks that allow you to redirect and reduce loop. Ensure that the loops you are editing are confined to a planar surface of the mesh. If not, you'll end up with odd looking creases and other shading related artifacts. They don't bode well with cylindrical surfaces or any kind of curved surfaces for that matter. They also interrupt edge flow, so it should be deployed as a last resort measure if all other options have been exhausted. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it informative, and I will talk to you in the next one. Thanks for watching.